Hello everybody, this is Gilo and today I will be showing you the very final video of this series. Um, in this video I will be showing you the other two bonus items that you get and the uh, areas of the last dungeon that I skip. First off, I will show you the boomerang function that lets you use your boomerang as a bomb takes up one bomb. Um, I kind of find it difficult to use. I think it's just easier to use your boomerang. The fire boomerang does damage already. Um, so sometimes you'll damage the enemy by the boomerang instead of uh, damage by the bomb. Well anyways, right here I'm just demonstrating more of the capability of controlling your arrow and I just had a little bit too much fun here. I was actually experiment. I never really got used to the mechanics of how the arrow works, so I decided to experiment and to better learn how to control my arrows. And right there, I kind of got it pretty good. And it just became fun just to manipulate where you want the arrows to go. And yeah. So, not much more to say. I'm just having too much fun here. I will show you what happens at that part a little bit later. So, this is the first area of the last dungeon that I completely skipped. And guess what? There's a Death Knight! What great quest! wouldn't be complete without one of these guys. The only Death Knight in this game. And as you see, I successfully got the Death Knight trapped by the mechanics of this dungeon so that he wouldn't run around and terrorize me. But I have the Gold Tunic on, so... Gold Tunic's overpowered. It really is. So I go up here and... I want you to memorize this. Don't write it down. You gotta memorize it. It makes it all the more authentic. So that was that part. Takes you back to the beginning of the dungeon. So before, um, this is my green tunic file. And as you can see by going to that part, you have to fight a Patra 2. And so I just use my super bombs because it kills these guys really fast. And there's that part. And remember that room that I said I'd never go in? This is what was in that room. And I get to experiment with that shield item here. Playing around with it, because I never really played around with it until today. I pretty much just mashed the B button. And as you can see, it protects me from the damage from the glee lock, from both its bullets and flames, uh, at the cost of one rupee. Uh, per dinging sound. Now the thing that you cannot do, and I've learned that here, is you cannot swing your sword and use that item at the same time. Um, you saw me get hurt quite a bit doing that, but if you don't swing your sword, you're pretty much all protected from projectiles completely. I do notice that if you move around some, it will um, hurt you at times. Now, this will protect you from bullets coming at you from an angle and flames and whatnot. That item will not protect you from whiz ropes shots. You'd have to... I've experimented. You have to be exact on your timing with your um, shield button. I mean, the, the magic from the whiz ropes has to literally be on top of Link right before you press the shield button in order for it to work and I can only get that to work like 10% of the time <laughs> so anyways you see me failing there until I decided to abuse the jump trick to get out of those Petra's ways this is that other part of the dungeon that um, I skipped this would take so much effort with the green tunic and you know, super power, super bombs, you gotta love them. But you'll see why this would take way too much effort with the green tunic. Um, 
in a few minutes. I don't know what I was doing there. I was oh, I remember. I had remember that combination. I forget. I didn't have it placed in front of my computer, so I had to go look in my room for that combination that I written down. Otherwise, I would never be able to pass this last part. That's why I was standing there still for so long. So yeah. And you can see those uh, mirror wizard of wannabes. There's a lot of those in this uh, part of the dungeon. And um, I don't utilize that move enough because, uh, yeah. So this looks pretty easy so far. Four blue dark nuts, you know. Give me some hearts. Um. Oh. Um, this file that I'm playing with has the, um, the heart? No, it, yeah, no, I'm not healing, yeah, I was about to say that I had that heart ring, but no, I didn't buy it in this file. But anyways, four blue wizards, not too bad. Um, so I go, do the combination thing again. We notice that combination that I just did is the combination to the Lost Woods uh, in the original Zelda. And you know, four um, splitting dark nuts. Pretty, pretty mean stuff there. And I go like, I just don't care right now. I'm not trying to avoid damage or anything. So you think, oh, they'll be dead. Nope. They're respawning. How about that? Um, one thing I forgot, didn't realize is, um, since I have the Quake Hammer items here, the Quake Hammer uh, power up, um, I accidentally, when you hold down on B, Link will charge his hammer and he doesn't slam it down right away so I'm not slamming my hammer down as fast as I normally could and thus it, it's gotten me hurt quite a few times with the dark nuts so I go like hmm that doesn't work I start experimenting with other methods of uh, approaching this room and right about somewhere in this room I kinda go oh crap I was looking at the wrong combination of um, uh, what order I need to go in the doors. I was looking at the sequence that I needed to do next instead of the current sequence. So this part took me a little bit longer than four doors to go through. Um, I tried to do that abusing spin move, but as you can see, they just run into your sword, and when they run into your sword, Link can't charge. When I successfully charge, the dark net splits and he hurts me. That's my least favorite part about those those enemies. It's not about the speed or their damage. It's about their splitting and how the dark nut will just spawn right on top of you because it's annoying. So uh right here I actually take things a little bit more serious. And you notice I'm fighting a lot more effectively now <laughs> when you take things a little bit more serious. Um, I meant to swing my sword there, but Link just couldn't do it on time. So sad. And look, the Dark Nut spawned on top of me again. The best part about the Mirror Shield, Wizards do all the work for me. Well, not much really to say about here. These enemies don't spawn. The only spawning enemies were those four splitting dark nuts. To add to the challenge factor. Wink, wink. Um, this room's quite a bit tougher. The patchers are immune to reflected shots, so... You have to man up and fight, or just super bomb your way through. Super bombs are really the best weapon ever. Just make sure that if the quest rules have bomb damage turned on, you're not any that you don't hang anywhere around the blast radius, or you will be sorry. 
Unless if you have the gold tunic, then you just lose one heart. And it's like a slap on the wrist. So... The main room I was worried about with the green tunic was this room. But with a level 4 sword and if I manage to get this far with with the level 4 sword that heart ring to automatically heal my life so I wouldn't have to have the potion to use my potions by then it could probably be done with uh, two potions and so this room is your reward for getting through that maze you fight some of those uh, mirror whiz robes that look like red whiz robes and blue whiz robes and look there's the combination and that's all there is so I decided to fight the last boss again in my green tunic my initial playthrough did not give this boss do this boss justice he hardly did any of his attacks each each uh, time you damage it uh, you notice it grows a new part to its body well each new part has at least two attacks to it I also utilize that a lot in this battle so what I do is um, before I go to the next form I'll purposefully I'll purposely not damage the last boss so he can do his attacks because the more you damage him, the more attacks he gets, and the lower the chance he has of doing a particular attack you want you want him to do. Um, this was actually quite difficult to do because um, by the end of the battle, he, he would only need to do one move, and he would never do it. He'd do all of his other moves. And toward the end of the battle, he does moves that can kill me in two hits. Um, and I only get to use the potion three times. Thank you, the breast potion. Um, much better than the red potion. Um, there's only really one attack from this boss that I uh, did not, I didn't manage to get, and I didn't realize it till afterwards. It's not a big deal. It's an attack that looks much like. Um, Pride from the very first boss. It's just a, a attack like that on steroids. This is the absolute best way of dodging this attack. With the green tunic, each one of those bullets would do 64 points of damage to me. Um, isn't that nifty? As you can see, this battle can get quite expensive. Expensive. In fact, I only had 200 rupees when I first tried doing this battle, and I kept on running out of rupees. Right there, the last boss, you, if you saw for a blink second, he was yellow. He's supposed to be yellow there. And when you hit him when he's yellow, he does that attack. You notice how much damage that attack did? Yeah, that's real scary stuff. So if you notice the last boss turns yellowy green like that, don't attack him. Or he'll do that bomb thing and own you. Even with the gold tunic. And he was like, oh my gosh! And I got lucky and he died right there. So anyways, this concludes my video series on Link's quest for the hookshot to quest. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned for newer projects. Thank you very much, this is Yellow, and you have a great night!